Pepe was created by artist Matt Fury in 2005 when he started making a comic in Microsoft Paint called Playtime. Eventually, Playtime became a zine called Boys Club about four friends just partying their way through life. In 2008, this comic, where Pepe is peeing standing up with his pants around his ankles and then asked about it later says, feels good man, was posted to 4chan where it blew up and became a bona fide meme used in a dizzying array of ways. This set Pepe on a path he's still on today, mutating and morphing as a meme into a galaxy of different variations, but for our purposes, there's two paths you have to know about. Pepe's journey down the dark road to hate symbol began because it became too popular. Trolls, for lack of a better word, wanted to reclaim him and make him unaccepted by the mainstream again. So they started associating Pepe with all the things we now associate him with and, lo and behold, it worked. Katy Perry shall never more tweet a Pepe meme. But there is another path that Pepe took, and unlike the Nazis who have mostly moved on from Pepe looking for new memes to exploit, this other path I speak of is marked by the powers of good who have held on and are trying to rehabilitate the image of this much maligned frog. This path is one of creativity and goodwill and hope for the future. It's a path of cooperation and fun. And it leads directly through rare Pepe being bought, sold, and traded on the blockchain. Welcome to Digitally Rare. In 2014, people on 4chan began posting their Photoshop frogs and calling them rare Pepes, even going so far as to put watermarks on them. Fast forward a year, and someone posted an Imgur gallery with over 1,200 rare Pepe pictures. Then the collection was listed on eBay and managed to get to a price of $99,166 before it was delisted. This origin story of the rare Pepe may seem silly, and it is, but it speaks volumes about people's desire to own digital assets. And as I mentioned in the last episode, the blockchain allows for the first time for digital assets to become scarce. So it should come as no surprise that in September of 2016, Joe Looney and friends unveiled the Rare Pepe Wallet, a marketplace to buy, sell, addition, and gift Rare Pepe trading cards. This marketplace is one of the first of its kind, preceded only by the blockchain card trading game, Spells of Genesis. One of the key new features that Rare Pepe Wallet brought to the table is the ability for anyone to create and sell their own Pepes on the marketplace. It's not a free-for-all. There are some basic guidelines they insist you adhere to, and they manually accept each new card onto the site, but they don't judge you on artistic merit. The main thing is they don't want to scare people away, which is, you know, understandable. As long as you follow a simple set of rules, you too can create a rare Pepe and sell it on the marketplace. Here's another cool thing. When you buy certain Pepe cards, like this one, you not only get the card, but you get a piece of bonus content. In this case, a song. Only the owners of this card, of which there are 168 in existence, can actually get access to the SoundCloud link to hear the song. Another great example of this is Pepe Balt, a fully playable game connected to a rare Pepe. So when you own a rare Pepe card, what exactly do you own? A Pepe card is connected to a token. And that token is a representation of an entry on the Bitcoin blockchain. You own the entry, which is the token, which is the card. What this means is that if Rare Pepe Wallet were to completely disappear tomorrow, you'd still own the Pepe as long as Bitcoin exists. In this way, it's actually possible that if for some reason your Pepe image was completely lost and there was no trace of it anywhere on the internet, it could suddenly be considered even more rare. You have the proof that you own it, but no one would actually be able to see it. It'd be the rarest of rare Pepes ever. Let's talk next about Homer Pepe. Most Pepes are additioned. So for instance, a creator will issue, say, a hundred versions of a given card. Homer Pepe, though, is one of a kind. At the first ever Rare Digital Art Festival in January of 2018, Homer Pepe was live auctioned for $39,000. 350 gone twice. Sold. <laughs> Who would pay that much for a Pepe? This gentleman. Peter Kell purchased him. It turns out not because he's a fan of Pepe or interested in crypto art, but because he's a crypto investor. He made a split second decision that owning Homer Pepe on the blockchain for nearly $40,000 would eventually yield a high return. 
This is no different from the traditional art world, which has always been some mixture of inherent beauty, which is in the eye of the beholder, and market value which is just what someone is willing to pay for it. What's remarkable and new is that Peter paid for something intangible, but that doesn't make it any less valuable. If anything, the provenance afforded by the blockchain could make that Pepe more provably rare than a physical artwork. If you buy a painting, how do you know it's actually unique? Not a fake, not one of many. The blockchain proves that the Homer Pepe that Peter owns is the one and only original. But leaving those big numbers aside, what's different about Pepe and what's different about crypto art in general is the potential for more people to get the chance to actually make money selling their work. Even if that work is something as seemingly trivial as rare Pepe's, that to me is the most exciting and promising thing about crypto art. Look at all these rare Pepe cards. Can you see past the hate symbol and see the beating heart of creativity and fun that is represented by all these different variations? Now look at the marketplace. Pepe's are being bought and sold at a good clip, not necessarily always for huge amounts of money, but it's happening. People who otherwise would not be able to sell their work for money are selling their work for money. And this is true of every crypto art project out there. People are buying and selling these artworks right now, today. So what do you think? Are you able to forget what you thought you knew about this little frog? Or is the power of the symbol too much to overcome? I'll admit it's still somewhat difficult for me at times. But what's got you excited about crypto art these days? Is there any new projects that I should know about? Let me know in the comments. Do the liking and the subscribing and the little bell hitting. This show is a collaboration between me and Jason Bailey, this isn't him, who runs artgnome.com, which you've got to check out. It's really cool. And he also just launched a new crypto art podcast called Dank Rares. It's on iTunes wherever you get your podcasts, it's really, really good. So please check that out. If there's a crypto art sensei, I think it would be Jason. Uh, and my initial song offering for my own crypto art project is Coming Along Nicely. It's where I put my song a day series, my ongoing song a day adventure uh, onto the blockchain and it's coming along. So please visit initialsongoffering.com to find out more if that interests you at all. So drink more water. No, don't worry. See you next time.